2.7 piecewise functions. So let's take a look here. Piecewise function is a function made of many parts of other functions. So there's pieces of other functions. That's why it's a piecewise function. Um, and this is an example of one. What that means is I want you to graph 2x minus 1, but I only want you to graph it when it is um, less than or equal to 1. And then I want you to graph 3x plus 1, but only graph it when it's greater than 1. So you're only graphing a part of this first one and a part of the second one. That's what a piecewise function is. Bob Barker reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. So evaluate this when x equals 0, and then evaluate when x equals 2 and x uh, equals 4. So when x equals 0, which one of these does it follow? Well, when x equals 0, it actually falls under this one because 0 is less than 2, which means I'm going to plug 0 into this function and not the bottom one. So because when x equals 0, it's less than 2, we use the x plus 2, so 0 plus 2 is 2. So there's your answer to the first one. With x equals 2, um, I look at these two and go, oh, x equals 2 down here It's because it's when it's greater than or equal to 2, which means I'm going to plug a 2 into this problem. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. And then x equals 4, well, 4 is greater than or equal to 2, so since that's uh, greater than or equal to 2, I use the 2x plus 1 uh, function, so it's 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. So basically, when you plug stuff in, you got to look at the stipulations here on the side before you solve. So with this one, I want to graph this, but only when it's less than 1. So here's 1. So I want to graph that everywhere where it's less than 1. And let's take a look here and see what we can come up with. 3 halves is 1.5. So there that is right there, 1.5. So I would go over 1 and up 2 and put a point, or I would go down 1 and over 2, down 1 and over 2, down 1 and over 2. And notice how I stop right here. I stop right here because I stop where it is less than 1. So that's why I'm stopping right there, because it's less than 1. I put an open hole there because it's a less than sign. So there's an open hole there, so you can tell that it is a less than sign right at the 1. And then I go to graph this one which is at 3, so at positive 3, 1, 2, 3, that's right here. And I go down 1 over 1, and I put the point. Um, so that's where I would cross at, but I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and I connect them with a line. And I connect them with the line because it's greater than or equal to 0. I have that shaded in. So notice how the graph just kind of bends all weird like that. The second graph is greater than or equal to 1. That's why I start at 1 and I, it's closed and I go the whole way over to infinity to the right. So the star is just there to help me put a place marker as to where is um, the y-intercept so I can graph it and go down. That's the only reason it's there for. The star doesn't need to stay there, but it's just so you are aware of that. Example 3, graphing something like this. I want you to graph the line uh, y equals 1. Well, y equals 1 is a straight line at 1. However, I only want you to graph that in between 0 and 1. That's basically what I'm saying. Well, notice how that's closed and that's open. The reason I did that is it's closed right there because it's less than or equal to at 0. It's open at 1. That's why I have that there and the line goes in between. Then I want you to graph the line y equals 2, which is the next line up, but only graph it in between 1 and and 2. Well, 1 is closed because it's less than or equal to, and 2 is not. And you're probably already starting to see the pattern. Then graph the line 3, y equals 3, but graph that only in between 2 and 3. And there it is, 2 and 3. Then graph the line y equals 4, but only between 3 and 4. And as you can see, it's less than or equal to, that's why those are there. And this could keep going up. This is called a step function, right? It looks like there's steps going the hey, entire Jerry, way up. What do you want to do tonight? Well, same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. So you have a summer job that pays time and a half for overtime. That is, if you work more than 40 hours per week, your hourly wage for the extra hours 1.5 times your normal rate of $7. Write a piecewise function that gives your weekly pay P in terms of the number of hours. 
So what we're saying here is, is if you worked 40 hours a week, very simply put, it would just be $7 an hour times however many hours you worked, H. So just 7 times H. Time and a half means you make one and a half times that. So, for example, if I made $7 an hour, I would be making now 10.5 because half of 7 is 3.5. I add that together to get the ten and a half. So really, whenever I work overtime, time and a half for me, I get paid ten fifty an hour. So if you worked more than fifty hours, you would get ten point five per hour um, for all of your hours over forty. So this is why I have this set up. It would be H minus forty because if you worked forty two hours that week, forty two minus forty would be two because you only really worked two hours of overtime. Which makes sense. If you worked 40 hours that week, you only did 5 hours of overtime. So in order to get a 5 in here, you would take 45 minus the 40, and you would end up with your number of hours. So this one right here, 7 times H, is what you're supposed to do only when you work less than or equal to 40 hours a week. However, whenever you work more than 40, so greater than or equal to 40, you use this right here. And basically what I did was I distributed 10.5 times H is 10.5 H. 10.5 times 1, negative 40 is negative 140. So whatever the amount of hours are that you worked, you just plug them in there and that will tell you how much money you made um, for that um, period of time for your pay. All right, who did this? I'm not mad. I Example just 6. This, I how much do you get paid if you worked 45 hours a week? Well, 45 is greater than, so I plug a 45 in there. So I use the second function, I plug in a 45. And when I plug that in, type that in the calculator, I get three hundred and thirty-two dollars and fifty cents. So there is your homework. Um, it's mainly graphs. It's mainly you graphing each individual piecewise function and combining them together. Um, the hardest part is graphing within the range that it tells you to graph. So what I found is easier when you're doing these problems is graph the line normally. Just graph it normally. And erase what you don't need, which means you should be graphing these all in pencil. So you can erase the part of the line that you do not need. Just graph each line like you normally would and erase what you do not need. It makes graphing piecewise functions so much easier. If you have any other questions or concerns, please feel to email me or check some more examples out online.